All right. Um, hey, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're just going to give it a couple of minutes um, just to let everyone kind of come in from the waiting room. Um, so for those of you who are here, um, we're going to be talking all things deliverability today. So really looking forward to that. So we'll get started in about one or two minutes. Hi, everyone. Sorry if it looks like I'm just staring intently at the screen. I'm just trying to find something before we get started. <laughs> So typically, as a good speaker, we need to maintain the uh, chat between us and our participants, and we need to ask how everyone is doing, where are you from? <laughs> so um, we will maintain the reputation of good speakers. That's why um, you're very welcome to leave in our chat uh, your notes, like where are you from, how are you doing today, what do you expect from the webinar and live sessions, welcome. Well, I think we're I think we're good to get started. So like Olga said, if you want to throw in the chat, you know, where you guys are calling in from, you know, what you're looking forward to today, that would be great. Um, so yeah, I think we're good to get started today. So like I said, we're going to be talking about all things deliverability, which um, is a really important topic to cover, because at the end of the day, um, you know, if your messaging is not getting delivered, you're really not having that impact with your prospects, you could potentially be missing out. So what we really want to do today is, you know, talk about deliverability, um, you know, some proactive measures that you can take, um, some best practices, um, but also maybe some troubleshooting that you can do if you do find yourself in a situation where maybe your deliverability has been compromised. So um, joining us today, so I'm Stephanie from the CS team here at Reply. Um, we have Olga, who runs our deliverability team. Um, so she's gonna be joining us. And we also have Angelina from our deliverability team. So she's gonna kind of be in the background answering all of your questions in the Q&A and the chat. So if you have questions as we go through all of this, um, feel free to leave your questions there. Angelina will get to you. Um, and then hopefully, um, you know, if we have time at the end, we can answer some of your questions live as well. Um, and as always, the session is being recorded, so um, our team will send out the recording to everyone who has attended later on. So if you need to refer back to anything, because there is going to be a lot of information that we're going to try to squeeze into this hour today. Um, so Olga, feel free to take it away. Um, one question. Uh, so uh, somebody in, in Q&A section mentioned the chat is disabled. So when I'm going to start? Maybe you can take a look uh, and investigate why the chat section is disabled. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look yeah. at that. But in okay. the meantime, um, the Q&A should be up and running. So if you guys can throw your questions there for now, that would be awesome. Perfect. So everyone received an email with the agenda of our call. But as a good speaker today, cosplay the good speaker, I still need to mention things that we are going to cover during the call. So let's do it. We'll speak about optimizing email deliverability strategies and building and maintaining um, your sending reputation. We will speak about uh, identifying and resolving deliverability challenges, how to understand that you have some issues. And we will briefly cover um, the topic called mastering email warm up. Um, we'll share some practical insights and we'll show how to create a filter because this is something that puzzles. Um, people typically. Um, so creating an outreach is like conducting an orchestra. And you need to take control over thousands of things to get the perfect result. A good tuned symphony that will work for your goals. Let's try to streamline the factors that will form your sending reputation. And the first thing you need to think about when you start outreach is you need to select the quantity of your domains and email accounts. And frankly speaking, I'm not a big fan of creating 10 or 15 domains like reply.io, get reply.io, get reply.com, etc. 
I do not recommend to do this because um, you need to understand that mail providers, they are designed to catch spammers. So if you decide to select the path that is very similar to spammers' behavior, like creating a lot of domains and sending the same content from these multiple domains, um, you can be at risk. You need to understand this. So uh, from my point of view, it's better to create one, two, maybe three domains. For example, if you try to reach people uh, from different uh, regions um america for example or uh, european union you can do different domains for this but generally stick to less domains but you can create more email accounts and a very interesting question here we got a lot of feedback from customers and uh, you know that the limit in reply for emails is uh, 400 emails from a mail account per day but it's better to send uh, 150, 200, no more. And this is the feedback we get, that you will get better results if you stick to these um, volumes. Next goal goes domain preparation, which is an essential part of this process, as this is your foundation. You can't build a stable house without a good basis. So things you need to do. You need to set up and make sure that you have this configured SPF, DKM, DMARC record, and you need to control your MX records. Most of you have heard already about these records. That's why I will not go deep into setup of this process. If you need any help with this process, you can reach out in live chat and reply and ask for deliverability team. So me or Angelina will come and help you. Uh, but I want uh, to remind you a few things about those records. First, those three records, first, they are responsible for email authentication. It means that you authenticate your mail provider to send emails on behalf of your domain. When you send an email, the recipient mail server, it will check those records. And in case recipient mail server will not see correct records, they will consider that your emails are not authenticated. It means that they may look suspicious and they can be rejected or placed to spam. It doesn't mean that without SPF or DKM records, you will go to spam at once. No, but this is something that increases your risks. Um, speaking about a mix records. Ah, no, I wanted to mention a few things more. So um, where to find those records? They are located at your hosting website. It's a place where you have your domain, where all the settings of your domain are located. So it's there. You, to get DKIM record, you need to speak to your mail provider. Reply does not provide customers with DKM record because we are not a mail server. Tools like uh, SendGrid and other, they will provide you with a separate DKM. We not. We use your DKM. So you need to take it from your mail provider, go to your hosting website and place it there. And a very interesting thing is a mix records. A mix records is a thing in configuration of your domain that actually connects your mail provider and your domain. This is something that is typically set up when you purchase a mail service. They, as one of the steps of connection, they offer you to set MX records. Unfortunately, a lot of customers, they either miss this step or they switch to a different mail provider and they forget that uh, they need to change MX records. You need to uh, consider MX records like a postcode of your house. Without good, proper MX records, you will be able to send snail mail if you are in your house or emails if you use mailbox. You will be able to send, you will not notice anything because sending process is fine, but you will never receive replies. You will never receive any email. So when you are at the process of creating of domain, please send a test email to your new mailbox and make sure you can accept emails because a very typical complaint is, hey, I have zero reply rate. We check why and we find out that mix records are misconfigured and you just, maybe you got some replies, but they are not delivered to your mailbox. Check it. 
Uh, so after you have configured your domain, you are ready to prepare it for cold outreach. Preparation means building your sending reputation uh, because a new domain has zero reputation. Typically, it's the, this process is called warm up. You probably heard this. Um, you can do it in two ways. Uh, the first one you can do it manually if you have time, efforts, nerves to do it. You need to gather a lot of email addresses of your friends, colleagues, neighbors, whatever. And you need to try to find as much different mail providers as possible. And you will send emails to them. You will ask them to open your emails, to reply to them and uh, to, mark it, to mark them as not spam in case of spam delivery. This is time consuming. You can use any automation tool that does warm up. We'll speak about it later, but yes. So when you have prepared your domain, you have warmed up uh, this domain for about three weeks. If you have a new domain, but the, the longer, the better. Uh, you can start uh, setting up your sequences, your campaigns in automation tool. When you do it, uh, most tools, including Reply, they have an option to create custom tracking links. And this is very, very good thing to do because um, when you are uh, sending emails from a tool, a tool provides you with default tracking links. Other people also use those tracking links. Of course, the tool does monitoring from their side to make sure the links are fine, etc. But still, um, it's better to use your own links. So you create custom tracking based on your uh, domain. And moreover, um, mail providers can be more like tolerant when they see that tracking link fits your sending domain equals. Now I'm going to exit from my presentation and I'm going to open reply to show you a few things. So when you go to reply to settings to section email accounts and open your email account and give reply a couple of seconds, you will see the section email account health. I think, frankly speaking, that this is in beta, but I'll speak to the team because it's time to remove it from beta. Uh, and here you will see a simple check that reply can do to make sure your records are fine. But you need to understand that this is a very thim simple thing. That's why sometimes you may see these sections red because we were not able to check automatically DKM record, for example. This is something that very it's very difficult to check generally for everyone. So you can click on the section uh, that is red or gray or yellow, and the chat will be opened. And this chat will be transferred to me and Angelina and uh, we will be very happy to assist you with your settings. Uh, next, what I wanted to, to show you is the section called branded links. This is how custom tracking is called in reply. Briefly, how to set it. Um, you need to go here to click on new link. Here, if you have one domain, you can stick with uh, always select all. If you have several domains, you need to create a batch of tracking links for each sending domain. That's why you need to click multi-select. And from here, you need to select email accounts that only belong to the domain that you're going to use for branded links. Let's say it's this domain. Then you need to specify um, the type of link you're going to create. And here you need to invent your future subdomain that will be used for um, custom tracking. Make sure you input here a subdomain domain because really a typical error is that when customers input their domain and they will get incorrect settings and they will not be able to set it. So let's invent uh, a future link. It can be called as open dot and your um, domain. You need to click on check. Uh, give reply several seconds and reply will generate you two records two types of records. One type is CNAME and the second type is TXT. To create custom tracking, you will need access to your hosting website. So if you don't own your domain, you're like um, an employee um, and you need time to ask someone to edit for you, you can click on the button reserve and reply will save the um, appearance of this link while you transfer this data to your IT person. So when your IT person adds these records to hosting, you can go back and enable this toggle and the link will be created. Let's get back to our um, slideshow. 
Okay, it's loaded. Uh, now that you have configured uh, your domain and warmed it up, it's time to set up your sequence and start. So how to start? Uh, start sending slowly with common volumes, volumes for your email account. This is very, very important. And increase your sending volumes slowly or your experience account blocks or spam issues. This refers not only to new domains, it's about any kind of domain and email accounts that start doing automated outreach. So if you send 5 10 emails per day manually, or you would do an automated warm up with 40 50 emails per day, and then you go to reply and suddenly send out 400 emails, boom, you will get blocked by your own mail provider. Sometimes it happens on day two or day three of your outreach, so it's it can be not the same day. Or even worse problem that you may experience in this case, you can start going into spam just because of the sudden ramp up. Because for mail providers, it looks very, very suspicious. What are you doing here? Maybe somebody stolen has stolen your account and sent in spam from it. Let's quickly speak about account blocks, because this is a very essential topic for people who are doing automated emails. Typically, account blocks happen for G Suite and Office 365 users. Most common reasons for this is you send too many emails too quickly, or your recipients marked your emails as spam. Unfortunately, sometimes um, there are cases where it's not obvious um, what happened and why your provider decided to block you. Providers do not send any information to us, so we can't know it. Sometimes it's just algorithms. But there are things that we can try to identify and um, investigate. How to combat this situation? So first, if the reason was in sudden increment of your sending volumes, Obviously, slow down your sending process. The second reason is more complicated because we can't know who marked emails as spam. This technology is present in huge marketing tools. We are not such tools. They Some providers give um, the report of people marking emails as spam. Um, but unfortunately, um, it's not possible in tools like Reply. So um, what I can recommend you is monitor how people reply to you. If you receive a lot of replies uh, saying, um, I'm not interested, I'm the wrong person, please opt out, please unsubscribe me. You need to consider if you have selected a correct audience for your emails. Because probably not someone replies to you and someone is silent and marks your email as spam and destroys your domain reputation. And also you may try to check your opt-out rate if you are using, for example, opt-out link or opt-out text. Why? Because um, the normal opt-out rate is below 1%. If it's higher, again, you need to understand that someone is not lazy and clicks opt-out, but someone can be lazy and click spam and that will be bad. Um, speaking about slowing down um, your sending volumes and your speed, I want to exit my slideshow and uh, go back to reply and show you um, some very great settings. You need to go to mail accounts. Again, you need to select your account and open safety settings. And here you will see two sections. The first is called daily ramp up. And if you enable it, you will see the starting amount. For example, you used to send 10 emails per day from your mailbox. You set it to 10. And repump value means how many emails reply will add each day to your um, starting amount, let's say five. So on day one, we'll send 10, on day two, 15, etc. And the second section, a limit of emails per minute. So if you set it like this, a reply will send one email within one minute. If you set it like this, one email within two minutes, which is a rather safe speed. But make sure you do not set a big throttling because if you set this, and if you, for example, use an A-B testing, most likely a reply will not be able to send both options and a reply will send only A version, for example. And also consider that reply sends not all time of your sending schedule. It, a reply takes some time to detect emails. That's why if you have a very big 
delay between emails and you have a very short sentence schedule and a lot of prospects to receive your emails, not all emails will have time to go out. Um, so let's get back to my slideshow. Opt out. Let's talk about opt out. Use it. I don't, I know that you don't want to look automated, but you really need to reduce the risks of being marked as spam, as this will destroy your reputation. Plus, can spam act obliges you to use clear opt-out method. So please use it. And um, imagine that you are a recipient and you receive a lot of a lot of emails, business emails, cold emails, etc. And you will try to find an easy way to stop it. So treat your prospects as you want to be treated and a very good tip so in reply you know there is a default text for text opt-out and uh, link opt-out a good idea is to change this text into your custom text of opt-out because um, this default text is used by a lot of people and the same thing as with links you don't want to use the same thing that other people use in their emails and you don't want to risk your emails being classified as spam just because you use the same text that other people use. Uh, let's move to the next slide and speak a bit about uh, content. So content should ideally be very, very simple without images, links, etc. Um, I need to mention that um, having an image or having a link will not 100% uh, cause spam issues, but it may increase risks. Um, ideal email is a very short email. Uh, so create a template that you want to receive because no one likes to read long reads where, where you can't understand what uh, people want from you. And I want to quickly mention the question of subject line. So as you understand, subject line needs to be very clear and catchy or personalized. And the most probably top subject line that people like to use is quick question. You can see the screenshot from our um, salesperson, how many quick question subject lines he had in his inbox. So it's not a very good idea to use this um, subject line also uh, the good tip of the con uh, for your content is that do not push for a call too fast imagine that you don't know the person you receive an email and he pushes like let's have a call let's have a quick call um you may not be ready to this um so maybe you can postpone this uh, suggestion to your step two for example um and speaking about content i want to pass the word to stephanie because she's a pro in how to create a sending schedule how to create follow-ups how to create good content so that people do not ignore you and reply to you <laughs> stephanie you're welcome thanks olga um yeah so i mean really what you want to think about when you're creating content especially from a deliverability perspective um and and really just even to get traction on the messaging that you're sending out is to make the messaging as personal as you can or make it appear as personal as you can so kind of going back to olga's point she talked about that that quick question subject line so that subject line did really well about three or four years ago. But then what happened is, you know, people started to see, okay, we're getting really good open rates with this subject line. So everyone kind of jumped on board with that subject line. And then what happens, lo and behold, you saw with that inbox, it just gets inundated with that same subject line. So the recipients start to catch on and say, hey, this is probably a cold email market as spam, or, you know, they don't open it or don't reply to it or whatever the case may be. So a, it's really important to constantly change your content, change your subject lines, you know, change the body of your email, utilize A, B testing and just really refresh your content maybe every two or three months. Um, you know, pay attention to your contacts who are not opening your emails or maybe pay attention to contacts who are opening the emails but not replying to you um, and then segment those contacts. And, and like I said, refresh the content there. Um, what you want to do, like I said, is your email seem as personalized as you can. So for example, um, we talked, we had a customer who got almost a 70% reply rate. And so what he was doing with the emails that he was sending and more so with his first step emails is um, he was giving a brief introduction of himself, um, you know, saying, you know, hey, I work in this industry, the same as you. Um, and he was asking two or three questions about their businesses, you know, what's been working really well for them? Maybe what are some of the roadblocks they're running into? Um, 
So A, it came across as, you know, not very salesy, but like Olga said, you know, if you're reaching out, especially if you're doing cold outreach, you know, these people don't know you, they've never heard from you before. Maybe they've never seen your name before. So if you kind of hop into something with very, like a sales pitch or very quick to when are you available for a quick demo, those types of emails will probably be ignored. So if you're asking questions about their business and kind of creating that conversation, um, it just is going to go a lot long, um, or a long way in providing traction on those emails. Um, in terms of scheduling, um, send or set up your schedule in a way that it would mimic a natural sending pattern. So for example, like within reply, you can set up your schedule. I wouldn't recommend setting it up from, you know, 12 a.m. Um, and kind of going that whole 24 hour cycle or on weekends, you know, maybe set it up. So like, you know, at the beginning of the week on Mondays, you start at 10 a.m., maybe finish at four and maybe Thursday, uh, Tuesday to Friday, um, you know, run it maybe from nine to five. Um, but like I said, have it mimic a natural sending pattern. So times that you would typically send a manual email. Um, if someone sees an email land in their inbox at 3.42 in the morning, they're probably going to think, okay, this is automated. This is not something that was, you know, maybe meant for me or something that put it like, you know, there's a lot of work put into it. So like, like I said, you know, just make sure that your emails are coming across as very personalized. Um, and so your prospects just think that you are creating it just for them. Like Olga said, you know, have create subject lines that are going to, um, you know, call attention to the email. Um, if you have a big list of contacts, segment them, maybe segment them based on their position in a company um, and have that subject line really tailored to their position. It's going to make it more likely that they're going to open that email. Um, and then um, you see on the screen right here, multi-channel sequences. So um, you know, we talk about this a lot. So within reply, um, you know, you can utilize more steps in a sequence beyond the email aspect. So I know today's about deliverability, but, um, you know, we do offer the option to have, you know, automated LinkedIn steps in your sequence, for example. So you can set up a sequence where maybe that first step of your sequence is a LinkedIn view profile. And what will happen is when that follow-up email goes out after that view profile, if your prospect got that notification saying, you know, John Smith or Stephanie Jenkins viewed your profile, when my email goes out to them, it's going to trigger some name recognition. So they might be more likely to open that email. Um, it also does come across as, you know, this is someone who is, you know, actively um, trying to, you know, reach out, you know, they they view the profile on LinkedIn, they sent an email, maybe they've, you know, after that sent a connection request. Um, so which what you want to do is make your prospects think that, you know, this is not automated, this is a personal effort on your behalf, and then you are going to get more traction there, more opens, more replies, it's just going to all work together to really improve your sending reputation and just maintain your deliverability scores. Uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, the one thing I wanted to add here uh, is about using multi-channel sequences. So how it can actually impact your deliverability. So let's say you create a sequence uh, with a lot of follow-ups and emails. You bombard uh, your recipient with only emails. But if you add a LinkedIn step, for example, for into your outreach, you will first um, contact this person in LinkedIn, make a connection. This person will... Um, understand who you are and then most likely this person will notice your mail inside uh, his mailbox and it means that uh, he will be more interested most likely he will reply something to you and this will increase your reply rate because the problem is that you need to take care about how uh, people are engaged how audience is engaged that's why multi-channel sequence can help although there is no like direct con connection and obvious connection between deliverability and multi-channel sequences. Then let's speak about list hygiene, which is very, very important. You may know that you need to validate your leads. Who doesn't know, please validate your leads. You can use any validation tool you know, but it's very, very important because when you send emails to invalid prospects, uh, your reputation, sending reputation drops. You may also, also notice that some emails, they bounce uh, even even if they have a valid status. In this case, you need to check the reason of bounce that you will find in bounce message. And um, you may see that the reason is different from uh, prospect being invalid. And you can investigate and see how you can troubleshoot. Um, also, a very good tip is mm, do not use your um, general email addresses like info, sales, etc. as your prospects, because most likely you will get a um, low engaged audience. People may not check those mailboxes. Also, a 
is this email addresses they can con uh, contain spam traps the problem with spam traps is that they do not bounce and you will not know it and um validation tools they do not always exclude uh spam traps what is a spam trap it is either a specifically created mailbox for this purpose or an old um, mailbox that was um, forgot um, that uh, the owner forgot to use it's transferred to spam trap and when you send emails to them you will have problems that's why yes use email validation some mail validation tools they can clean the list from most popular um, spam traps but be very careful with the source of your leads um, do not buy lists prospects and um, very important thing and again, as I mentioned, um, engagement of your audience. You need to do list hygiene from time to time. Try to remove people who were not interacting with your emails for two, three months. Because when you um, send and send and send follow-ups to people who are not opening emails, not replying to you, providers see it, they understand that you are not interesting sender to recipients and they will drop your sending reputation speaking about about bounce rate so good bounce rate is below five percent if you can keep it to three percent that will be perfect and those of you who do big outreach who send a lot of emails you need to understand that the more you send the uh, less bounce rate should be the lower bounce rate should be um, because you are treated with a specific attention the more you send this is very, very important. Um, now, let's speak about identifying and resolving deliverability issues. Um, your rates can be a good indication if something goes wrong or something is bad. Of course, we both, uh, we all understand here that open rate is not very exact uh, and accurate metrics. Um, sometimes uh, you may find false opens or sometimes you can get into inboxes, but you don't see open. It happens because open tracking pixel is an image. And sometimes, for example, Office 365 users, most likely they will have images disabled. So when you go to inbox, they open a mail, but because of disabled images, open um, pixel will not be downloaded and you will not see an open. So when you have your open rates below 20%, it's time to contact deliverability team to see what's going on, because sometimes it can indicate spam issues, but sometimes it's not a spam issue. It's the question of your content and subject line and your prospects. Maybe they are not just interested in opening your emails, but it was uh, try it was it was checking and um, speaking about reply rate the normal reply rate is higher than one two percent so if you have less it's also a time to take a look into your sequences because the less you have replies the less engagement is and the more risks you have um, also speaking about reputation so a domain has its own reputation, but also email accounts inside your domain, they also have their own reputation. And you may notice that sometimes some email accounts perform better, some worse, some open rates are better, some no. So you need to remember it. Also, your reputation is different for each email provider. So you can go to spam to G Suite, and you can go to inbox to Office 365. And uh, this is something you may want to know. Um, Talking about speaking about uh, mail providers, the most popular mail provider is G Suite. Um, it's about 70-75% of uh, users who select uh, G Suite as their mail service. The next um, is Office 365. It's about 14% of people who use it. And uh, other mail providers, I don't have exact statistics, but they are very different. Um, you should also note that Gmail, free Gmail accounts and G Suite business accounts, they do have right now different spam filters, although before they were very similar. And the same works for free Outlook and paid Office 365 uh, mail provider. There is a new feature in Reply that is going to be released very, very soon. Uh, it's called MX Detection. Remember, we were speaking about MX Records, which are your post code, similar to post code. So knowing MX Records um, means that you can understand which mail provider your sending, um, your prospect uses. Uh, 
And uh, sometimes gossips say that uh, Gmail delivers better to Gmail and Outlook better to Outlook. Um, so let me show how it looks like in reply. Um, a lot of customers requested this feature and um, to match your to match your sending account with a mail provider that is used by your recipient for example um, it makes sense this feature makes sense for those who has two domains uh, and it intentionally creates two domains for using two mail providers office and g suite um, if you don't have two domains and don't have different pro providers you don't need to run and buy them it's fine it's just something that people may want to have um, so here is the sequence uh, I go to the sequence to settings and in general settings uh, you will see a toggle which is called matching email providers um, you need to go to people tab and add uh, your future uh, prospects I have some prospects prepared so you add a content contacts and here is the section provider and we detect uh, the provider and here um, I have already enabled this but by default when this feature is going to be released this section will be disabled so if you want to check mail provider you need to click on it and you will see it and if you have connected to your sequence uh, two accounts with uh, different mail providers reply will match G Suite to G Suite office to office other mail providers will be uh, automatically assigned to accounts so it will be a bit randomized um, also why this uh, setting can be useful soon we are going to add a filter with, that will be called provider how can you use it to analyze your deliverability if you notice that you get um, a lot of reports from people that they have found your email is spam you can go and check which mail provider those people use for example they may use g suite and you thus may understand that your deliverability to g suite to gmail is uh, not very good um and you also can analyze your statistics if you see that some mail providers have very low or zero open rate you can also consider that something um is not right um let's get back to our slideshow and hey, Olga. Yeah, um, sure. Can I jump in really quickly with a question? Yes, definitely. Um, so, so this is actually about that new feature. So that's why I wanted to kind of just jump in now. Um, so we do have a question in the q and um, from yep. Barack. Um, he says, great feature. Um, is there any filter or setting um, that would maximize the number of emails that are going to an email server? So for example, is there a way that you can specify and say, hey, I only want to send 50 emails per day to Gmail servers or like people who are using Gmail as their ESP? There is no such feature, but it sounds very well. I will speak to our product team. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yes, thank it you. really. It's it's a very good suggestion. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, let's get back to our methods of identifying issues. Um, a very popular method is seed test. So you can Google seed tests, inbox placement tools, and you will get a tool that will uh, offer you a list of uh, mailboxes recipients and will get you a tracking code. You need to insert this tracking code into your email and send emails to those test addresses and you will see in box placement. You need always to you need to understand that um, these results are very good, but they not they may not be um, accurate because different uh, prospects may have their own spam filters. Um, so just be careful with it, but this is a good thing to analyze what's going on and also when you find out that your emails are going to spam you may want to check if this is a problem of your content or this is a problem of domain or mailbox because sometimes wording in your content links in your content or tracking link for example they can trigger it when you remove it email goes to um, inbox and I will give you a typical resolving scheme how to manage those spam issues. Of course, um, when you have your particular unique case, um, recommendations may differ. But 
generally the first thing you need to do is you need to reduce the sending volumes because you are delivering emails to spam it makes no sense to waste your prospects and to continue damaging your account that's why reducing sending limits i know how painful it is when you have one domain and you need to reach a lot of people as soon as possible quickly quickly um next uh goes domain warm up so if your domain is damaged you can restore it again by using warm up because warm up will uh create a positive uh reputation for your emails and restore them uh, then it's a very good thing to change your content because your previous content is known as spammy because it was included into emails that were known as spam so unfortunately the best way is to rewrite your content as much as possible if you can remove the links you were using good please remove it um the question the typical question here is um how many changes you need to do in your content well it's more about common sense so the the less your new template looks like your old template the better and again cleaning your list and removing people that are not engaged do not send emails to people who are not interacting with your email so now um whether you have a new domain or an old domain with spam issues or you have an old domain with a newer mail account you may need to warm up it um, so i want to show you a quick overview of the platform mail toaster you know it's a warm-up tool um, we'll go very quickly uh, through the platform so when you go into your account um, you will need to connect your mailbox um, if you have office 365 you will connect it in one click it's very simple if you have g suite account um, you may uh, do some extra things um, you select this option so you will see the preset of imap and smtp settings for gmail so you will basically need to add an email account and you send a name and here a password you can try to add your uh, common password for your mailbox but you will need to go to your g suite account and check that you have enabled less secure apps access um, to uh, of less secure apps if you have a new email a new email account a new subscription you may not have this option the problem is that g suite uh, starts to remove less secure apps and you may not see it in this case you need to turn on uh, to factor authentication to create app password you can't create an app password so a password specifically for one website or for one application without turning on to uh, factor authentication which is painful i know i know but it's needed and in support section of uh, mail tester you will be able to find the article that will uh, work you through step by step of this process so uh, let me enter my mail i will not enter um password i click on continue and here you can select two profiles the main difference between these profiles is how many mails we will open mark as not spam and reply and here you can set a daily goal daily goal is the number of mails that you will reach after some time as a maximum uh, by default it's 25 you can set it up to 50 emails and daily increment means how many emails we will add each day similar to ramp up mode in reply so i click on start mailbox um, the toggle will be disabled sometimes you may see errors right now you see an error because i haven't entered my password to this account um, on the main page let me go to accounts that have some history so in the main page you will see the statistics of your sending these emails were detected in recipients mailboxes um, you will see the inbox filter and we will get back to the filtering uh, later you will see also the mailbox health section so when you connect an email account we will uh, the system will do a basic check but after you start sending emails the system will do a full check and this check um, happens um, I think once a day that's why you may see some delays but that's fine um, speaking about filtering system so the tool is a peer-to-peer -to -peer tool it means that when you connect your mail account uh, you will start receiving emails from other particip participants of warm up and they will start to receive your emails 
obviously your mailbox will be flooded with a lot of emails and you need something that will help you to manage this um, enormous uh, number of emails. That's why we created inbox filter. So you need to take it. You go to your mailbox. I'll show an example on G Suite, but in support section, you will find an article where we also show how to do it in um, Office 365. So you need to, to go to settings, see all settings here, um, filters and blocked addresses. Here you need to create a new filter. And in the line has the words, you need to include uh, this filter because all incoming emails will contain this code. Um, and then you need to click on create filter. And here you can click on skip the inbox. Emails will not appear in your inbox. Um, you can apply a special label if you want uh, to. And actually, um, you can create this filter. Please do not delete emails because you will hurt other participants. And when you receive other participants' emails, please make sure you do not click those emails as spam because the warm up pur pur purpose is to get out of spam. And if you click spam, you will hurt other participants. Um, let's take a look at other tabs. So you will see the tab that is called templates. By default, when you connect your account, um, we will send on behalf of you auto-generated texts. But I would really recommend you to use custom templates, so templates that you may use for your sequences um, to make it to warm up your templates. And the last step is called settings. Uh, where you can change your warm-up profile that you were to select at the beginning. Um, you can change your daily goal here. You will manage your uh, mailbox settings in case you change the password, etc. And the signature, you can input your uh, signature um, here. So that's basically all about warm-up. Uh, probably one thing I want to add, um, how you can build your warm-up strategy based on the case you have. So for example, you have a new domain. It's better to warm up for at least three weeks, uh, but the more the better. If you have an old uh, domain that was not used for several months, for two, three months or more, um, it's better to warm up because you need to like restore your sender reputation to um, make some activity in your email account. If you have an old domain, but um, you have created a new mail account, again, ideally to warm it up uh, because this um, account doesn't have any reputation on any activity. If you start to send a lot of emails from this account, most likely it will be blocked. And obviously, if you have an old domain, you have been sending emails from it, uh, but you got into spam, uh, you can use warm-up to restore reputation. And the last case, how you can use warm-up is to support your uh, sending process. So if you send uh, cold emails, uh, you can use warm-up to balance between cold and warm outreach. Um, that's all from my side. Stephanie, good work to you. Hey, Olga. Um... So while you're talking about warm up, um, I'm just taking a look at the Q&A right now. And so I've been trying to help Angelina answer some questions because there seems to be a lot of questions coming in. Um, so I know Angelina is doing her best to keep on top of it. So um, maybe we can get to um, a couple of questions about warm up while you're here. Yeah, um, sure. What is the maximum daily number of emails that warm up can achieve? It's 50 emails in this tool. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, Okay, here's another question. This is more about domains. Um, how many emails can you set up per domain or how many should you set up per domain? Um, is 100 email addresses too much? Is there a recommended limit? Olga, I have a feeling I know what your answer is going to be. Uh, frankly speaking, there is no direct recommendation on the limit of emails. I do have some customers that have more than 100 emails. They are very good in outreach, in outreach, so they're really doing great and their open rates are high. And yes, they have uh, this volume, but I think you may need to be careful with this. And probably the more email accounts you create, the less emails you better send from this account, from one account. Yeah, I, yeah, I think to your point, Olga, you mentioned that customer that you are aware of that has, you know, a lot of, you know, addresses and domains and whatnot. But it, it again, it kind of gets back to your content, and the messaging that you're sending out. Um, 
like what you don't want to do is create, you know, a hundred email accounts, for example, and you're just sending the same content from all of those email addresses or those domains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's see if we have any other questions here. Um, so Olga, earlier you were talking about, um, kind of like sounding the alarms when you're looking at, you know, reply rates and open rates and things like that. Um, so Ian is asking, what volume of prospects do you think is enough um, to sound these alarms? So what kind of sample size do you think is enough? Is it, you know, maybe looking at um, reply rates of, you know, a hundred prospects or what, what do you think is ideal there to get an accurate kind of sense of um, when to look at those alarm bells, so to speak? Good question. Uh, let's think. I would probably stick to common sense. So if you have, for example, five, ten prospects, you can really get zero when reply rates. Uh, people may, may ignore you. But if you have, for example, 100, 200, 300 and more, and no one is replying, then it makes sense to um, take a look. And um, also, if you message people from one company, you may expect that your open rates will be, for example, zero, because sometimes companies have like corporate policy that is spread across all accounts. And by default, uh, they can have disabled uh, images. That's where open tracking can be zero. Speaking about reply rate in such cases, um, there is such a thing called catch all email. Um, it means that um, you may have a list of prospects and you may think they are valid because you have validated them. They were not indicated as um, invalid. You send the mails to them, but unfortunately they catch all the mails and there is no one behind them. And th such emails will go to a separate mailbox and no one will most likely no one will check it. So sometimes zero open rates and reply rates when you send to one company can be explained by these two. Um, I see the new question about hosting websites. Um, mm -hmm. Frankly speaking, they are very similar. Probably most popular are GoDaddy, Namecheap, but um, they are structured in the same way. Hey, Barack, I see your question about BIMI. Uh, B -I -M -I. Um, this is something that is used by some people but there is no direct impact on your open rate it just increases your um, level of trust to your emails but i would not say that this will automatically make spam filters filter you to inbox so there is no such thing but if you build a good trusted relationship with your prospect uh, maybe you can get a reply. So you can try to set it, but you also need to understand that BIMI is not supported by some mail providers. If I'm not mistaken, Office 365 doesn't support it, but it's something that we need to check. Um, so you can try. Um, I see two open questions here. I think we can reply to them. So um, Grant, um, I've seen prospects responding from catch-all emails before. I've also seen emails change from catch-all to valid. Is it okay to send emails to catch-all emails? You can try, again, because you have an experience. You can try to do it, um, but probably you can be careful and add not many catch-all emails to your outreach or do it in batches. For example, you add a batch, you see that these prospects are valid. They are replying to you. You can add um, another batch. Um, next question. Michelle, so branded links is the only way to get a report on send deliverability or there is another feature in reply that gives that. Um, Michelle, so branded links will not show where your email is delivered to inbox or to spam. Unfortunately, it's not possible to do. What branded links does uh, do, they replace a default tracking with your custom link. And by this, they reduce the risks of being filtered to spam because of tracking. And so you can consider branded links as a feature that helps you to reduce uh, spam issues, but it will not um, give you the other type of analytics, other type of opens. Um, it will work as the same tracking. Uh, that you used when you used a default tracking. Um, 
next um, question. Uh, um, and yeah, yeah, quickly, sure. sorry, I just wanted to hop in. Um, Sankara, um, I know you've had your hand raised um, for a long time and I, I did see that you had your hand raised. Um, I was just gonna kind of get to you um, towards the end. So we do have six minutes left. So I know Olga's gonna read out your question. Um, if that's the question that you had your hand raised for, um, we'll definitely get to it. If there's something else you wanted to ask, um, just throw it in there. We'll get to that as well in the next six minutes. Yeah. So the question, how do how do changes in recipients' behavior and preferences, such as rise of mobile email usage, impact email deliverability, best practices? Um, I will answer this question. If I didn't get the idea of the question, Sankara, please feel free to add. Um, People, when they use mobile phones, a lot of customers, they use uh, Apple Mail. And uh, Apple has the uh, security setting that can change the way open tracking is detected. So uh, it also, by the way, impacts you as a sender. Sometimes when you connect your, for example, Gmail mailbox to Apple Mail, you may notice that you have like 100% open rate, which is obviously not true. Um, this may be caused by Apple Mail. Um, and when you send emails to um, Apple, Apple users, um, your open rate can also be not very accurate because of that setting. So that's why open rate is a good metrics, but you need to understand that it's not very reliable metrics and you need to, 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 to note it. The next question, are there certain scenarios uh, whether it's better to turn off open tracking in favor of better deliverability? Oh, that is a very good question. So. Spam filters may react to open tracking links. And yes, disabling open tracking can um, improve your deliverability. But open tracking is the tool that you use to analyze the engagement. And when you disable it, you will lose the ability to check open rates. Of course, you can rely on reply rates, uh, but you will lose a very important tool. So it's decision you need to make. Uh, what is better for you? Yeah, and, and I think Olga in the past, um, I know we've spoken um, when we do when we have worked with customers who maybe have been having some deliverability issues. Um, and sometimes we might recommend turning off open rates just temporarily, um, um, just as a way to troubleshoot. But yeah, to Olga's point, um, if you do turn off the, that open tracking, you're not seeing um, the traction of your emails. Um, you can't see, you know, multiple views or things like that. So um, yeah, I would like Olga said, it's a personal decision to you. Um, but um, yeah. Um, okay, so I think we have time for one more question. Um, let's see. Yeah, we have a couple minutes left. Um, okay, so we have Rouge. Um, he raised his hand. Um, maybe we can do one live question before we head out. For... Okay, sure. Where did he go? Did he put it? Maybe he put his hand down. Probably. I see, yeah. Julia. Yeah. Okay, Rouge, I turned on um, your mic if you want to go ahead with that question. He's muted right now. Okay. Hi, Rouge. Um, okay. Um, well, I don't believe we have any more questions in the Q&A. Um, so we'll give Rouge maybe another minute to see if he wants to unmute his mic and ask his question. Um, but I think we've gotten through all 44 questions that were there. So thank you, um, Angelina, um, for hopping in and, and kind of getting to those questions as fast as you can. Um, and thank you, Olga, um, for you know kind of joining us today and really sharing in your ex with your expertise. Um, this has been really great. And I know we said at the beginning of the session that there was gonna be a lot of things to cover and there definitely was. Um, but um, like Olga said at the beginning of today's session, if you guys have any questions about deliverability or maybe have, you know, some issues that you want to fix, anything like that, you know, reach out to our support team. Our support team will be more than happy to connect you to our deliverability team who can then help you or, like I said, answer any questions that you have, even if it comes to things like domain records, settings, things like that. So um, again, deliverability is a hot topic. Um, really important to kind of really understand. And, and that's definitely what our team is here to help you with. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, anything you need, um, let us know. Um, and again, thank you to Olga and Angelina for, for joining me today. Bye. And from my side, I want to thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for your expertise regarding content and for handling all this webinar. <laughs> and Julia, 
I thank you for managing those questions because once I was working in QA session a section, it's very difficult when you have <laughs> thousands of questions and you need to constantly reply to different things. So this is a uh, great work, great job. Thank you both. And okay. thank everyone. Thank you everyone for attending. And and quickly before we head out, um, today's session, um, it will be on um, Reply's YouTube page. Um, and I'm going to double check with marketing and make sure that we get these recordings sent out to everyone who registered. Um, but in the meantime, you can check it out on our YouTube page if you can just need a bit of a refresher. So have a great day, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.